let us now take up the subject of acid-base reactions. These are special double displacement reactions, and I'll just illustrate one right quick. The reaction of HCl, hydrochloric acid, a strong acid, and sodium hydroxide, a strong base. The double displacement is clearly seen. The proton of the acid interacts with the hydroxide of the base and also we have the sodium interacting with the chloride here to give you sodium chloride and water. These reactions can be looked at in a very general term. This was a specific example. But more generally speaking, one can have an acid plus a base will give a salt plus water. So you can see those components here. And this will be true no matter, especially with strong acids and strong bases, which I'll define here in a moment. Especially with strong acids and strong bases, this will be true every time. An acid plus a base gives salt water. Now let's do consider this a double displacement reaction in which this first reaction is the so-called molecular equation. And let's now break this down into a total ionic equation. So strong acids will break down in water to its respective ions, a proton, plus a chloride. Sodium hydroxide, too, will always dissolve in water to give sodium ion and a hydroxide ion. And sodium chloride also will break down to give Na plus, plus Cl minus. But the water does not appreciably break back down into the hydroxyl group and the proton, and so it essentially stays as a whole water molecule, which I will show with an L for liquid. Now we have the total ionic equation. Finally, let's complete the trifecta here and put the net ionic equation. And recall that the net ionic equation is had by crossing off the spectator ions in the total ionic equation and writing what remains. So let's start from the left side and see if we can identify the spectator ions. We have H in the form of a proton here. And on the other side of the equation, it appears as part of a molecule, clearly a change. Chloride, on the other hand, does not change. It's freestanding chloride on the reactant side, and it's freestanding chloride on the product side. Similarly, sodium doesn't change, but the hydroxide, the hydroxyl group, does indeed change from being a free-floating anion to part of a compound. And so with that, let's write the overall equation, the overall net equation, that is. And this is the net reaction. A proton plus a hydroxyl group goes to water. And this is going to be true no matter what your strong acid or strong base is. They will all have the same net ionic equation. Now, let's discuss what we mean by strong acid and strong base. Well, before I can do that, let's define an acid and a base. An acid is, is a material that donates a proton, and a base is a compound that donates a hydroxyl group. And it's that simple. So you can see by 
hydrochloric acid is indeed an acid because it donates this proton and here we can see why sodium hydroxide is a base because it donates this basic moiety here. Now what is meant by the term strong acid and strong base? Indeed there are a myriad, there are literally thousands of acid and bases but there are very few that are strong acids and strong bases. A strong acid is an acid that disassociates 100%. So let me write that, let me clarify that. HCl is a strong acid because it disassociates 100%. That is to say, if you started out with 100 of these at time zero and you had none of these, and you wait just a very brief moment in time, you will find out that there's now none of these and 100 of these and 100 of these. In other words, it's a strong acid. It breaks down 100% into its counterparts. On the other hand, uh, an example of a weak acid might be acetic acid. So acetic acid will indeed break down into an acetate group and a proton, but it will not do so 100%. As a matter of fact, if you start out with 100 of these at time zero, such that you have none of these and none of these, if you wait a while, you'll find out that you say, and I'm making up some very general numbers here, you'll have 95 of these and only 5% will disassociate. And so what you see is this would be called a weak acid because it does not disassociate 100%. Back to our original example. The same is true for a strong base. A strong base will disassociate 100%. And a weak base will disassociate less than 100%. So far, and we're going to limit our discussion, at least for the short term, to strong acids and strong bases. There are essentially seven strong acids that I want you to recognize. It eight strong bases. So let me begin by telling you what the eight strong bases are. And they are lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide. Calcium is a group two, so it takes two hydroxide. Strontium and barium. So your eight strong bases are the hydroxide version of each of those. Now let's consider the seven strong acids. Each of your seven strong acids will include one of these five central atoms. So let's do some that are pretty easy here and let's start with the bottom. Iodine, HI, one of your strong acids. And we're going to have HBr, hydroiodic, hydrobromic, hydrochloric. That's three easy ones. There's two more of your strong acids that have a chlorine central atom, and that is chloric acid and perchloric acid. So there we have one, two, three, four, five so far, and sulfur is represented by sulfuric acid. And finally, your seventh is contains a nitrogen and it is nitric acid. And so there are your seven strong acids and there are your eight strong bases. Any one of these can react with any one of these and they will always give you salt water and 
every one of those will give you that is every one of those combinations of a strong acid and a strong base will give you the same net ionic equation. Mm -hmm.